Gary Stein is his name. Gary, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. All right, Gary, we've, we've seen a Jordanian pilot burned alive. We've seen hostages beheaded, including Americans. Uh, yes, ISIS is not a state. Well, they might be at this point in time, but they're not the state as we typically think of. Do you agree with Susan Rice when she says they're not, they don't represent the threat known that we had during World War II for the Cold War? I think they represent a bigger threat. We know you do, they're bigger. Threat. Absolutely. I mean, from, from September 11th to before September 11th, that Marine barracks, you know, Lebanon, it's all been extremist Muslims, all of this radical Muslims, and ISIS is the very, very core of that. We can call them, they call ISIL ISIS, but the... The main point is they're moving forward with the caliphate, and they want to move forward with that with that new state they want to set up, and they're not going to let anybody get in their way. So you're not saying she's just wrong. She's got it completely wrong. They're, they are more dangerous than the Soviet Union was? It, be, be, you know, the whole entire uh, Obama administration is focused, take, trying to take the focus off radical Muslims and, and ISIL, and they're going to try to rush on the, on the rug because we've already beat them, according to the president. The president beat them. He, right. went, he went and killed Osama bin Laden all by himself. You know, we all know that. And uh, for anybody to challenge that, his administration is not going to happen. All right, let's take a look at this video of Susan Rice making those comments. Still, while the dangers we face may be more numerous and varied, they are not of the existential nature we confronted during World War II or during the Cold War. We cannot afford to be buffeted by alarmism and a nearly instantaneous news cycle. She's blaming the, the, the fear, if you, were, if you will, on ISIS on alarmism in the 24-7 news cycle. Of your, your take. I don't think that a Jordanian pilot that was burned alive in uh, early January would be worried about what the news cycle is right now, or the Americans that have been killed, or the Japanese that were beheaded last week, or the $2 million they tried to get ransom from everybody. You know, this is we, we keep hiding from this as Americans, and uh, I think it was important that, that people went out and watched the video of the Jordanian, the Jordanian uh, pilot being, being uh, killed. I think it was very important for people to realize how realistic ISIS is, and before we know it, they're going to be at our front door again, and Obama administration and Susan Rice has no answer for what's you going on. You do believe they'll be back at our front I, I think they're here already. I'm guaranteed. I mean, no one thought September 11th was going to happen, and it happened. And then we all tried to blame other people. The veteran journalist Bob Woodward is reporting that the top military brass are confiding in him that they're frustrated over Susan Rice and others in the White House micromanaging what they say. That's a, that is a as an American citizen, that is a, a frightening proposition to hear that some bureaucrat in the White House are controlling what, uh, are managing, if you will, the America's generals. My concern is this. We got we have less than two years of Barack Obama in the White House. We don't know who's next, obviously. But we are watching uh, the morale of the military go, to, go up in flames. I realize the military, by and large, is... Uh, it is a very professional military. They put their personal thoughts aside and go to work for whoever's doing the job. But the morale only takes so many hits. Absolutely. We've seen a purge of the greatest generals, General Mattis. A lot of great generals have been purged out of this military since Obama came into office. And now we have these desk jockeys that come up, and all they do is they just follow the orders of the president. No one questions anything. But we are now seeing a couple generals that have gone in front of the Senate hearing committees and different press and said, uh, you know what, we have to get a strategy with ISIS. And they're starting to speak up because they understand that we're at the foothold of another war. Are you optimistic or pessimistic? You know, you just said we're seeing some generals step up. That That's a good thing, clearly. Uh, are you optimistic or pessimistic that we're America's military leadership out of this White House is headed currently? Uh, President Obama has never led a soldier, Marine, airman, or sailor in his entire life. And he has no idea what he's doing, but I'm... I'm optimistic that our generals, that our Marine Corps generals and the Air Force generals, our generals at bay, you know, have a plan of what they're going to do. And they just need to let the, have the cuffs come off. All right. Now, you, you have a bit of a controversial background, if you will. You were discharged from the, from the Marine. Controversial, depending upon whose point of view. Yes. Uh, but, but your situation is unique. And I wonder if viewers, they may have heard about your situation. Yes. Because you, you, made, you, were, on, you were in the news quite a bit about a year ago. Uh, or a couple years ago, I should say, uh, you were discharged from the Marines for a Facebook post that you made that I understand was critical of, of our president. Yes, it was a critical Facebook post that was said in a heated conversation that, that I probably had lacked a little bit of tact in saying, but I stood by my, uh, by my post as saying that, you know, I don't believe what the president has is the best in mind for the military. And for that, you were discharged? Yes, discharged in a little less than 36 days. How did, how did, 
you know, uh, obviously we want our military to be loyal to the commander in chief. Absolutely. Uh, but it is a little disconcerting as, as a citizen to hear that our military is unable to voice their opinion. Yeah, it's a very fine line for military to voice their opinion. And, and my my main concern was that military members need to know uh, when to when to obey lawful orders and when to obey non-lawful orders. And I would never say that President Obama was given a, a non-lawful order, but the military members from the private up to the generals need to know what those mean and how to follow that line. Well, what, well why would you imply that if he hasn't given an, an unlawful order? Because it could always happen. It's happened before. It's happened, uh, we've seen in, in history where uh, right. military members were tried because they were ordered to take, to take uh, arms away from people in New Orleans. That happened during the hurricane. They tried to take arms away from people. And you can't do that on American soil to Americans for no reason. <laughs> no question about it. That's a great point. The, the rationale behind it, Gary Stein, is, is an excellent point. All right, I want to wrap it up and say I'm concerned about the, the road we're, travel, we're traveling down right now with the morale of the American military. Uh, hopefully you're right, and, and we're seeing those generals step up and, and reverse that trend. Uh, your idea that uh, that you were slapped on the hand, discharged because you voiced your opinion. We're now watching American generals, according to veteran generals Bob Woodward, do the same thing privately. Uh, so I find that very, very, very interesting. Gary Stein, Iraq War veteran, thank you for joining us.